you guys. Welcome to American Beer TV, and we're going to be bringing you another wonderful series of pairings from the Bottle Room. I'm up here in Bottle Room at uh, in Uptown Whittier, and uh, we have our chef Tony, who has put together an amazing menu of beers to pair with Epic beers. Now, you, we also did the uh, an Epic beer dinner down at Cabo Tacos, and so it's going to be really cool to bring you several different, a couple different dishes, and a couple different chefs. Uh, interpretations of what pairs well with a given beer for uh, similar beers. So, in conjunction tonight, we also have um, we have um, brainless on cherries. We have st smoked and oak golden ale, and we have um, the uh, Utah sage saison. Both beer dinners include those beers. So this is going to be a real unique opportunity for us to explore how two chefs pair a dish. For, two, for the same kind of beer. Totally different ways of looking at it. In addition, can we use the Imperial uh, IPA uh, to pair with the ceviche? And we have a couple different beers tonight. We, we are going to have their um, Brainless on Peaches and, as well. And right now what I have for you is their Brainless. But this is brand new. This is uh, only hit like last week. It's Brainless on Nitro. So this is a Brainless Golden Ale. We did a video on that one before, but now this is on Nitro. and it's, I'm, this one's been uh, mellowing out here a little bit. I've been talking, but but that nitro pushing it through primarily on nitrogen really adds a wonderful creaminess to the beer. It makes it really nice, creamy, and complex. Uh, it's a really refreshing Belgian ale, and that creaminess just takes it over the top. So this is what we're starting off with. Just have a beer to kind of get warmed up for the beer dinner. We also have a special treat tonight because Kevin Crompton. The head brewer from Epic just got off a plane, and he's right here uh, with us. And so we're going to try to grab him. He's got you know a lot of talking to do about his beers. We're going to try to grab Kevin. We're also going to try to grab the head chef Tony, and we're going to try to sit down with both of them and talk uh, talk to them about how they feel beer and food pairing and how that works and get their t thoughts on uh, on those kinds of things. So I have a great show coming up for you. So check it out. Stay tuned. Cheers. Dinner ever, our fourth annual of the summer dinner. Uh, thank you for coming. You're in for a good treat tonight. You're going to meet Tony in a second. You all know, but to get us started, we're going to meet Kevin. Uh, Kevin is the head brewer at Epic. He's come all the way down from Salt Lake to be with us here tonight. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to have Kevin up talk about the first beer you just had, a little bit about the brewery, and then we'll get started. All right, enjoy. Okay, so uh, thank you all for coming tonight. I'm really stoked to be here. Uh, this is my first time here. First beer that we're going to try, and this is our, uh, we call it Brainless Belgium. It's a, it's a Belgium Golden Strong Ale. It's about 8.5% alcohol. Typically, Belgian beers aren't put on nitro. Um, you know, some of my colleagues in the brewing industry are like, wow, that's kind of strange. Why are you doing that? Um, you know, I think that, that this produces a very silky, very drinkable profile. Uh, we use, uh, th this beer is about 8% steel cut oats, which also kind of promotes some of that silkiness uh, lingering on your palate. So I think it's a great beer. It's a very approachable beer. It's perfect for this introduction here. So cheers. I hope you all enjoy it. Thank you everybody for, everybody for coming out. Um, real quick, thank you, Kevin. This is probably one of the uh, beer dinners that I've been anticipating the most, for, probably for over about six months since I started trying the uh, Epic beers. Uh, I just knew that for sure they would be awesome paired with beers. And I, and I knew with the lineup that they had that it would be perfect for summer also. So I did wait the whole season to do your beer uh, with the dinner. Anyway, um, real quick, um, first course, uh, we're starting off with the, with the Daywood Scallop, which is real sweet and succulent. We're, we're going to take this a little bit south of the border. We're going to do a corn and poblano, poblano rajas with a little uh, sweet chipotle. And I think these flavors are going to pair real nice with the uh, kind of lemony, acidic uh, Saison style beer, which is the straight up Saison. Um, awesome beer. Thank you. Um, and, and I picked it for that kind of reason. It's going to be a, a crisp, cold, clean beer to go with kind of a slightly spicy Mexican inspired dish. And if you could say something about the straight up Saison. Well, I, I like it up. Straight up saison is a is a, is, is a traditional saison that we produce. Saisons are are, are, are pretty adventurous beers. Saison is a, is kind of a gamey tasting beer that uh, 
the strain of yeast that, that we use produces almost like a musty characteristic that um, Saison Brew is also referring to, refer to farmhouse or barnyard. And those are, those are a little bit more on the gamey side. Um, our straight up Saison is a, is a, is a, is a cleaner, crisper, slightly less gamey version of a, of a, of a Belgian Saison. Um, it, you get a really nice lemon zest characteristic that comes out of it, and that's that's because of the way that we, the hops that we've selected for that brew. We uh, we use the same strain of yeast that uh, Saison Dupont uses. Yeah. I, I think this is a wonderful brew, and I can't wait to try it. So cheers. Hey guys, so we're gonna get in the first course here, and this is um, the, as you heard uh, Tony and Kevin talk about. Um, this is the uh, straight up Saison paired with a seared day boat scallop with charred corn and poblano salsa. So I'm gonna get into this. As always, when we're doing a beer tasting or food beer pairing, we're gonna taste the beer first, get an idea of the way the beer tastes, taste the food, get an idea of the way that tastes. And then while we have a little bit of that food left in our mouth, we're gonna take another sip of the, uh, of the beer and see how the beer changes the food and how the food changes the beer. So let's get into this. This is the straight up Saison. 7% Saison, really got a lot of that gaminess or farmyard qualities, that farmhouse qualities that he was talking about. But let's get into this scallop here. This scallop looks absolutely awesome. Here's the scallop, very nicely done. I'm gonna dig in. Cheers guys. The scallop is really meaty, got some spice, a little sweetness from the corn. Let's go into some beer. And the corn really brings out the sweetness of the beer. And the um, scallop is very light, but it pairs nicely. The intensity is correct. It's got some of that chipotle, uh, a little chipotle sauce on it, which has some spiciness. Uh, spicy food goes really great with Belgian style beers or saisons. Um, there's some mintiness from the um, garnish here. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Some mintiness from that that's pairing quite nicely with some of the spicy, uh, the noble hops and the and the Cezanne, really, really nice pairing. Cezanne really brings out the cilantro and that salsa. We're having another Cezanne. Uh, this is a spiced Cezanne, and uh, this beer is called Utah Sage Cezanne. The Utah Sage Cezanne is a, that is uh, spiced with fresh herbs. So we use sage, rosemary, and thyme. Sounds like a song I know. Um, it's also dry hopped, which is which is something that typically saisons are not dry hopped. Uh, this beer is dry hopped with citra, which produces uh, the citra with the sage and um, rosemary and thyme. Almost comes across as like a tropical fruit in a way. So there's a little bit of pineapple, a little bit of guava going on in the in the aroma. But this beer has a has a bitter characteristic that purely comes from the sage. There there isn't a hop that goes in in the very early part of the boil for this. It's it's all uh, for the most part uh, the bittering compounds are coming from sage. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this beer. This beer's made of a little bit of Utah sage. So I was thinking, how could I incorporate that with seafood? And I was thinking, doing shrimp and grits. But the grits are going to have a sage cheddar, which is a, a cheese called the Derby Sage. It's from England. Um, it's a delicious cheese, and it, it really incorporates well into the polenta with the grits. Sorry. And, and the, uh, the prawns are a little bit spicy, not crazy spicy. I'm going to do uh, my favorite summer ingredient, which is heirloom tomatoes. We're going to do a uh, heirloom tomato salsa with the prawns. And, uh, and I, I think it's going to be an awesome match because, it's, again, this, uh, it's a saison, so it's, it's uh, kind of light, it's, it's crisp, it's like 7%. Um, and it's going to kind of cool down a little bit of the, from the prawns. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Okay, guys, so now what we have, we have the second course, which is the Utah Sage uh, Saison, which is paired with a giant chili prawn uh, with sage, cheddar, polenta, and a sweet heirloom tomatoes. So, let's go in and get the uh, taste of the, saison, the sage Saison. Really herbaceous. A little bit of a sharp bitterness from the uh, sage, but still got that nice Saison yeast profile. Let's go ahead and get a, a bite of this prawn here. That's a big prawn right there. Like Tony said, that has some spice. Let's get an idea of what that is with just the prawn. That, that really quenches the heat from the prawn. 
I'm gonna go ahead and get some of these tomatoes and this cheesy polenta here. Cheers, guys. Some spice, freshness from the tomatoes and the herbs, cheesiness and creaminess of the grits. There is some sage going on. I gotta get it. Wow. That really becomes just a totally different animal. I don't even know how to explain that. I'm gonna cut a little bit of this shrimp so I can have the shrimp, the tomatoes, the polenta, all together along with the beer. It's creamy, it's cheesy, it's meaty, it's herbaceous. With the beer, it's, that kind of cleanses your palate. It's got some of that hop, right? herbaceousness that kind of works with it, but also because of the hops that are in there, it also kind of cleanses your palate really nicely and kind of quenches some of that fire. Man, this is a really awesome pairing. I mean, a lot of different things. This is an experiment in like contrasting flavors. These flavors really, these are really unique flavors are going together and it's really creating something totally unique. Very interesting. I'm gonna enjoy this. I'm gonna turn the camera off. Really great stuff, guys. Cheers. So brainless on cherries. Um, this is this is one of six barrel aged beers that we do. Um, this is a we take an existing brand, brandless Belgium, which was the opening beer that you tried on Nitro. Brandless Belgium is a golden strong Belgian ale. Um, we take this existing brand and uh, we were able to take one brand and turn it into three brands by taking an existing uh, work stream and putting it into the barrels and adding fruit to it. So uh, when, we, when we first started out, the, the brainless on peach and the brainless on cherries was aged in white wine barrels. Um, and, and the white wine really kind of went well with the peach because of the lighter profile of the peach, but there was something lacking in the brainless on cherries. So uh, we, we thought about it for a while and, and got some samples and we decided to put that into a red wine barrel. And when we put the brainless on cherries into a red wine barrel, it, it really complemented some of the uh, some of the tart profiles that are that are that are that you're used to with with cherries. And and the red wine barrels have like this tannic characteristic to them because red wines are fermented with the skins, so you get this almost like a, a dry tannic characteristic. Uh, that, that definitely complements the, the cherries. Yeah, cheers, I hope you enjoy this beer. I love salmon, and this is steelhead salmon, which is only available for a certain amount of weeks yep. during uh, summer. Couscous, beautiful thing. It's salty, it's kind of pasta-like, but uh, I love putting dry fruit into it. So this is a summer stone fruit uh, Moroccan couscous. So it's got uh, cherry in it, it's got apricot, it's got peach, and figs in it, as well as almonds. You guys are uh, almonds, uh, you guys are uh, allergic, don't you? I, I felt because this dish was kind of going, kind of like that Moroccan style, that I would pair it with a little uh, saffron honey, so that's the sweetness on the dish. And I, I don't know, if, I've never seen saffron honey, I think I made it up. Uh, but, uh, I'm thinking that the dish will be, it's, it's very heavy on the fish, and saltiness on the couscous, that all that saltiness will combine well with the cherry beer and the saffron honey. So enjoy. So now we're on to the third course, and this is the uh, brainless on cherries paired with a seared Arctic char. Um, actually, it's the the steel. It's not an Arctic char. It's a it's a steelhead uh, salmon. They said might be the Arctic. Maybe it was the same thing. I don't know. Uh, that's what Tony said in there. Go by when the chef says something, you listen to him. Uh, with a Moroccan couscous with sour cherries, black figs. He's got some apricots in there. So really unique dish here. As always, we're going to go into the, the beer first. Really dry, really fruity, really jammy. Lots of that red wine tannic qualities to it. Let's get a little bit of this salmon along with this couscous. Really meaty. You got that salmon kind of mushiness. You got almonds going on. You got the couscous. You got some sweetness in there. Um, let me get a little more of that, of that beer. Really kind of the cherries bring out the fruit of the, of the Moroccan couscous. It really adds another level of that stone fruit quality. It really brings out the cherry flavor in the beer uh, with the stone fruits in there. They really blend each other very well. And it and it's not competing with the um, with the salmon at all. It's actually going very nicely with it because it's a Belgian ale as the base. It's going very nicely with the salmon. 
Uh, really unique. A little bit of that hunting quality on the outside of the salmon. This is a dish I would never have thought of in a million years. Another one of my favorite um, fruits aside from stone fruit. Not salmon, stone fruit. Uh, is our peaches for summer, they're the best, best fruit. And uh, pork and peaches are very good friends. So one of my best friends is pork belly. Yes. And John's, John's. Anyway, we're doing a, a bacon brioche bread pudding. It's not really a bread pudding, it's actually more like a stuffing and a bread pudding and a baby. This would be it. Uh, the pork is actually a dry rub for three days, and then we roast it and braise it, and it's really tender and fatty and delicious and meaty. Anyway, yeah. The peaches are kind of uh, acidic, and the rest of the dish is kind of sweet, so I think it's going to be an awesome pairing. But the peaches are actually cooked in uh, an oaky Chardonnay wine, which I think uh, the brains on peaches is, is aged in uh, Chardonnay oak. Yeah. So I think it's going to pair really nice. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I touched base a little bit about our brainless on food program and uh, with the brainless on cherries and th this is this is brainless on peach, which is again this is a this is a barrel aged beer. This is one of six of our barrel aged brands that we do. Um, we add a pound of peach puree per gallon going into the casks. Then we add champagne yeast. Some pectic enzyme, which helps to clarify it. Uh, it's used in the wine industry. Uh, it's used in fruit fermentations a lot. And, uh, and this is aged for four to six months in a Chardonnay cask. And and, and like Tony uh, talked about, the uh, the dryness of Chardonnay and, and, the, and the flavor of peach is, is just a really nice marriage. So I hope you enjoy this beer. Cheers. Hey guys. So this is course number four. Now this is a uh, Snake River Farms pork belly with a kind of bacon brioche stuffing, quote unquote. He, you know, you heard Tony in there, he was talking about, it was kind of like a savory bread pudding, kind of like a stuffing, um, and some brandied peaches on there. So, and with that, we have the brainless on peaches. Let's tear into this bad boy. First of all, again, we're gonna try the beer. Brainless on uh, peaches, 10.7%, finished out in white wine barrels with champagne yeast. Really dry. Not quite as jammy as the cherries are, but it's got a real perfumey aspect of the peaches. Um, since there's no sweetness, if you, if you took peaches and you pulled, it, pulled the sweetness out of it, I call it kind of a perfumey, but it's also got the kind of white wine notes to it. Very vinous. Really, really unique beer. I'm really interested in seeing how this works. This sounds such like a great, such a pairing. Um, I'm just gonna dig into it. Lots of maple and sweetness come to them. Readiness, the oakiness really cuts through the fattiness. That I mean, this got fat and sweetness going on, along with the brioche bread pudding. It's a ton of sweetness, like a really decadent, fruity, barbecue, and really, really fatty, just really nice. It's really rich, and it's really robust, and luscious. And the beer really is so crisp, and so dry, and so drinkable, it really cleans the palate out nice. But it also uses a high alcohol note to, to pair with it. You're getting some more of that blending of the fruit quality. Really amazing pairing, and again, not one I would necessarily expect. This is a beer, because it's so dry, so crisp, but so much fruity, you could pair it with a dessert really easily, but this is a great way to pair it with something so, you know, savory, although this is still a very sweet, savory dish, which you can do with like kind of a smoked or barbecue pork kind of a flavor to it. It still has a little bit of the sage qualities, like a stuffing wood. It's really interesting. It really is a blend between like a stuffing and a bread pudding. Somewhat sweet, somewhat savoring, really interesting. With that dish, it's one of the few ways you can get away with blending sweet and savory so well. Because it's so complex and also so incredibly rich and luscious. It's fantastic stuff. I, uh, when I tried the ne this next beer, 
I was so impressed by it, the smoked and oak. It's a, such a cool name too. Anyway, this beer deserves something really big and uh, chocolatey and uh, kind of smoky. So uh, what better than smoking and bacon? So we're doing a uh, Valrona dark chocolate gelato on an ice cream cone with uh, a combination of hazelnuts and bacon as the sprinkles. So um, I think you're gonna enjoy this. It's gonna be a great, great uh, pairing. And I'll let uh, I'll let uh, Kevin talk about the beer and its awesomeness. All right, when I when I saw the pairing and I saw smoking out and chocolate and bacon all together, I thought this is just this is magic. This is gonna go so well. So uh, I'm gonna talk about the beer. Uh, Smoking Oat is a uh, is a Belgian straw ale that we we age in, in whiskey barrels. Um, that the the oat portion of Smoking Oat and the, the smoky portion of Smoking Oat comes from this cherry wood smoke malt that we use. Uh, cherry this cherry wood smoke malt comes from Breeze Malting Company in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Great beer to end the night with, and I wanted to thank everyone for showing up tonight. I want to thank Tony. It's, 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 a, it's an honor and a privilege to be here, so thank you all very much. Cheers. Hey guys, so we're down to the final course. We've got um, smoked and oats, which we've had on the show a couple different times. Really awesome beer. Now, this time, um, they're pairing that with the dessert course, so that's going to be uh, a dark chocolate and jalapeno gelato ice cream cone with bacon sprinkles. So, uh, yeah, that sounds pretty amazing. So, as always, let's go for the beer first. Smoked and oak is such a robust, smoky, oaky ale. So good. I'm really interested to see how it's going to hold up with dessert. So we got this, and, and this is perfect. We got chocolate with his bacon sprinkles. Let's get that, let's give it a taste of that. Wow. That's such, that just blows away. It's got the meatiness. See, these, these bacon crumbles are not, they're not real meaty or chewy. They're really crunchy. They taste much more, they have a texture of kind of like those, um, chopped almonds or peanuts that you'll find on the top of a sundae, the chopped nuts on a sundae. That's kind of what the texture is, but it's got a little bit of the smokiness. And with the chocolate, it works really well. And then with this beer, it just brings out that smokiness. This is an amazing pairing. Really unique, the, um, the chocolate in there really kind of mellows the smoke and the oak out a little bit. And, the, and it's very dry and it kind of cuts through the sweetness and the richness of this gelato. I don't know if I'm getting the jalapeno in the gelato. I don't know if he went through that. He didn't. I don't remember Tony saying he had a jalapeno in the gelato, but it's a, it's a dark chocolate gelato. I was almost expecting the. Um, I didn't get any of the cone. I should probably get some of the cone. I'm just gonna crack the cone up in here. Okay, let's get some of the cone and the ice cream and the uh, bacon sprinkles, and the beer. Mm. Really amazing. Great stuff.